firmware 8.0 autopilot observations. I drive this route weekly. Uh, we've been on the freeway about 60 miles now uh, through both construction zones, stop and go traffic, accidents, so on, so on, and so on. Uh, so far my observations are the car is doing a considerably better job, and yes, I'm holding the wheel. Uh, the car is doing a considerably better job uh, maintaining the lane with the lane lines. Uh, I've dri I, like I said, I drive this weekly, both directions, and um, I've driven this enough to know that uh, the car is going to be weaving a little bit. Occasionally the lines disappear, come back, disappear, come back. Uh, today it's keeping perfect lock on the lines. I haven't noticed the lines disappear at all. On top of that, um, except, you know, in cases where there actually is no line, such as some of the exits here. Uh, now, while it's doing a good job keeping the lock, the line, the lock on the lines, um, it's also keeping me nice and stable in the lane. I'm doing very little ping-ponging back and forth, uh, which was what I would say a considerable problem. And oh wow, that was the first time I completely lost the line, and yet it did keep me going in a straight, you know, straight kept me good. Um, but at least that was the first time I noticed. Uh, so, anyways, it's keeping me in in the lane pretty darn good. Uh, it's able to see, now you can see it'll, it'll, it notices both cars over there. Uh, one thing I did notice is that if, even if there's an SUV in front of me, it would also see the vehicle in front of that SUV. Now, there is no visual way I could see the vehicle in front of that vehicle that's in front of me. So, uh, two cars ahead instead of one car ahead. So, that, I guess I would have to call that radar x-ray vision in a sense, uh, which was what Elon was talking about uh, as part of a safety feature. Uh, something about uh, uh, time division multiplexing the, uh, the radar signal uh, underneath or around or through the car in front of you uh, to see further. And uh, another thing I've noticed is uh, the inc there is a major increase in the number of nags to hold the wheel. Um, even though I have my hand on the wheel, I'm not gripping it very tightly. It's more of a at-ready position. Uh, now, my grip isn't strong enough for the car to constantly detect that my hand is on the wheel. Now, if I got it real tight and I give it a little resistance, um, then it knows that I am holding the wheel. But if I just got a loose grip on it, uh, just basically at the ready, but not really putting any pressure on it, the car will still nag you to put your hands on the wheel. Now, that nag has increased considerably, where usually I'd only get maybe three nags in this whole stretch of 60 miles um, that we've done, done so far uh, as we're heading to the Madison Supercharger. Uh, I've probably gotten it two dozen times so far, so the nag has increased exponentially. Um, I will be testing the uh, three strikes in your route where after three nags the car will slow down and stop even if you take over. It will not allow you to re-engage autopilot. Uh, next, automatic lane changing has been excellent with little to no hesitation back and forth. Now usually it would be click, 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 click as the car's thinking, 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 can I move over, can I move over, can I move over, okay let's move over. Um, I attribute that, see right there, boom at the ready, ready to move over. Um, it's a little hard to demonstrate on the freeway here. However, I noticed as I was in city driving, the ultrasonic sensors appear to be refreshing considerably quicker. I know Elon and the uh, blog post and release notes said the radar is now sampling at 10 times per second. However, 
I think they have also increased the ultrasound, uh, which is the parking sensors, the 360 sensors, um, to re refresh considerably quicker. Um, as I noticed, you know, driving past curbs, uh, signposts, so on and so on, that it would paint a much more detailed picture and uh, detect those objects a lot quicker than it did previously. Let's see, um, some other autopilot observations. Uh, it seems the cars are detecting divided highways considerably better. Uh, whereas previously there were a couple of, uh, I think I had, I was up, I'm up to four divided highways now, obviously. I've only had uh, this firmware version for eight hours. Um, Previously, and let's go behind this row of cars over here and show you guys the uh, the uh, radar seeing further ahead, the X-ray vision radar. Uh, now, on divided highways, a number of them that I go on, even though it's a divided highway with a median, uh, the car would still limit the speed to five over. And uh, I mean, most people are doing ten over on those divided highways. But we're talking divided highways going through the back country. Now, usually it's one lane each direction, but uh, these highways are not. Um, I've, div I've discovered that the car is now recognizing uh, the four that I've driven on today as divided highways and allowing me to set the speed anywhere. Likewise, the uh, speed restrictions have gotten a little tighter in a way, whereas now on on non-divided highways, where it limits you to five over, previously on the firmware seven flavors, it would let you set the cruise or the uh, autopilot speed to anything you want, but just limit it to five over. Uh, a nice way of doing that would be, say, you were going down a, a street that was uh, 25 miles an hour, so you'd set it at 55 or 60 because you know a little bit further up the speed limit's going to increase so that way when the car got to those roads the speed the speed of the vehicle would automatically increase that is no longer now uh, it will only let you set it to five over so it will not let you preemptively set the speed higher Let's get a little closer to this guy here. A little too far away. Um, right now I'm on distance setting of seven. Let's bring it to one just to get a little closer. And well, this wasn't quite what I had in mind. It's a uh, pickup truck pulling a trailer. So I haven't encountered that on, auto, on firmware eight yet. So let's see how that displays. And that's just displaying as a single passenger vehicle. All right, let's go around this guy and find just a couple of normal cars. And it looks like traffic is slowing down, which will be good for demonstration purposes. I'm going to put my distance back at 7. So that way we start slowing down a little sooner. The regeneration, uh, regenerative braking is now what it used to be on like the classic Model S cars, which always had the stronger regen, never got the, uh, the uh, fully neutered version like the autopilot cars did. Okay, let's bring it up to four now that we've come down in speed a little bit.
the double cars showing the two car lengths ahead. Uh, and there are two cars ahead. Now, opinion, final, my final opinion so far on the... Traffic jam, people. Where do you rush them? Where do you rush them up to? Uh, my opinions on the automatic freeway exit uh, are mixed. While on every test so far, the car has taken the freeway exit. However, the car has also maintained freeway speeds on those exits, which has prompted the immediate takeover uh, or control. Um, of the driver, so it, now we can see it kind of. You'll see it fading in and out a little bit. If you rewind just a little bit, you'll you'll be able to see it again. Maybe as we slow down here, but um, it kind of defeats the purpose of the automatic freeway exit taking if you have to take control immediately, anyways, to prevent from getting in an accident as. Uh, as the uh, autopilot is still maintaining your freeway speeds. So, well, it did show up, it showed a little uh, faded glimpse of two cars ahead of us. It might show again. But in general, autopilot seems to be a lot more robust and a lot sturdier. Uh, thank you for all those that ruined it for the rest of us by requiring a crap load more notifications and warnings. Though it's manageable. Pretty much the only thing that's really bugging the living crap out of me is the uh, smart zoom nav. I hate having that. I mean, you can't even can't even see any of the time or any other notifications on the top when it does that. Plus, it's half the time it's not responsive to bring back. Oh, there's the uh, the new uh, steering wheel warning. Uh, so I'm going to take control. That was the new notification warning where it'll flash uh, a white border around the whole screen. down just a little bit and I'm not going to be a lemming and wait in line with everybody else we're going to go in the lane where there's nobody in it oh that's uh and always putting the camera on the top and all the other apps on the bottom. I like my camera on the bottom because then every time I turn on another app, it shuts my camera off. Then I gotta go through and do it again, switch the screens. It's really a pain in the butt. They should at least let us be able to turn it off. Okay, we did lose lines again. I always previously had problems with the lines in this area. So it looks like that is going to be a continuing issue. And that is it for the current. I'll give my overall opinion of everything for Firmware 8 so far uh, shortly um, after I get the chance to play with, around with it a little more and uh, become a lot more accustomed and familiar with it. Smile, cheese!